Um, so if you remember what we did last time was we started with y equals the absolute value of x. I don't know why I did that. Absolute value of x. And we found that it had a shape like this. And then we did different things. Like we would add something. Okay. So we add something on the outside. So after we took the square root, we would add something to it. So that would take all the same outputs that this had, but add a constant to it. So what did that do to the graph? Moved it to the left. Up or down. Up or down. Moves it up or down. Okay. Remember that the the output of this function, this function here, is almost the exact same as this one. For whatever number gets put in, the same number comes out of the absolute value, but then you add a number to it. So one, if it's if we're gonna add, well, if we're gonna subtract six, zero is negative six, one is negative five, two is negative four, right? All of those outputs, those vertical things, those y's, get changed, and they go six down. All the outputs go down six. So this would be down six. <coughs> um, how about if we add something inside of the absolute value? Remember what that would do? That would move it to the left. If we add one, it would move it to the left one. Why, why left if you add one? When it goes to the right, if you add one? It goes when you move to the, like on the, like on the, the graph, it's positive. Yeah, but if you're adding one, it wouldn't be positive. Yeah. Yeah, it's left. I mean, well, no, just because left is negative, <laughs> so if you add one. Then you should move to the right, but we're moving left. It's the absolute value. It's not about the absolute value. It's about adding something to x or subtracting something from x inside of the function that it's a part of, right? If the function we're talking about is the absolute value function, um, then adding something or subtracting something inside of that function is going to move it left <coughs> and right. Left if you add and right if you subtract. And um, let's take a second and think about that. So we have the absolute value of x. And uh, to compare, we have y equals the absolute value of x, let's just do minus 1, because that's what we have here, or plus 1, sorry. Uh, so this one uh, looks like this, OK? And one of the easiest ways you can think of it is to look at that point, not, not the origin, but that, that point on that graph, on the absolute value graph, uh, at what we call the vertex. Um, <clears throat> you'll find that vertex uh, when, well, yeah, you'll find that vertex when this is zero. Okay, so when the inside of the absolute value is zero, you're kind of like at the at the middle point of the graph. Does that make sense? Right. If this is zero, then that's kind of like home base. And if you go to the right sum, then you'll start going up this side. And if you go to the left sum, you'll start going up this other side, right? So to the right is this way, and to the left will go up here. But if the inside is zero, we're right there at the middle. Okay. So if we come over here to this graph, well, let's ask ourselves, like, where's that vertex going to wind up? Is it going to go wind up over here? Well. What value of x will cause the inside of the absolute value to be 0? We need to plug in for x to get 0 inside here. Negative 1. So at negative 1, at x equals negative 1, that's where you find the, like the center of your graph again. So if you put in a negative 1 and you add 1, you get 0. And there you find your vertex. And as we look to the right, like if we put in 0 into here, then we get 0 plus 1 is 1. And so at 0, we'll be one step to the right of the vertex. And at 1, 1, we'll find a point. If we go to negative 2, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. The absolute value of negative 1 is 1. So you can see that symmetry around the vertex. Does that make sense? 
the right and to the left of the vertex, you'll find that, that symmetry. So if we ask ourselves where would that vertex wind up, that symmetry is all down to where the inside of the absolute value is zero. So the x value that you need to use to get this to be zero is negative one rather than positive one. If you put positive one in there, you'll get uh, two, the absolute value of two. Uh, so, no, how helpful was that? Because with all of the other transformations, this subtracting something from here, multiplying the outside by two, maybe putting a negative there, or instead of two using a one half or three fourths or something like that, that's all after you have taken the absolute value. That's outside of the absolute value function. When you go inside of it, then you're kind of messing with, with the input in a way. The input is still what you put in for x. But you're messing with what you take the absolute value of. So if you, if you make everything that you take the absolute value of one greater than what you plug in there, then you've got to shift your x values, in this case, to the left a little bit to compensate for that. So let's see, we have down 6 and to the left 1. And what did this multiplying by 2 do? It sounds like you're, yeah, you're doing this uh, like a ratio. Every time that you go over one for the x, instead of going up one for the y, you go up two for the y, right? So it makes it twice as steep. It doesn't shift it up and down, but it does. It makes it steeper. It makes that angle steeper. So it's twice as steep. Over here. If we move everything down six, you can think that we're like moving the vertex around and then we can work our way around that. So we move it down six and we move it to the left one. There's our vertex. And then we just make sure that whatever this graph looks like, y equals the absolute value of x, that this one's twice as steep. Move over one, go up two. Move over one, go up two. Move over one, go up two. And the same thing over here. You know there's symmetry, symmetry right there. <coughs> Does that make sense? So now we're just going to do it in reverse. We're just going to see what happened to the graph and then decide what the function would look like. Side, did it move up or did it move down? Should we add something? So if we add something to the inside of the absolute value. Okay. So how does this graph compare to this graph? Okay. It was probably like, like multiplied by a negative or something. Multiplied by a negative? Or but remember when we multiplied by a negative, if we multiply this by a negative, y equals negative absolute value of x? Let's look at x, and what comes out, and then what it looks like when you put a negative in front of it. Let's put a negative uh, 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Absolute values of these are easy, right? Okay. So what happens when you put a negative in front of that absolute value, make these things negative, because these are the absolute values. You just get negative 2, negative 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. Right? So this is the input, and this is the output. So for this one, you go, uh, to graph it, you would go, to the left 2, and y is 2, and you go negative 1, positive 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. This is exactly the same thing, except for it's actually exactly the opposite of those outputs, right? So instead of going negative 2 and then going up to 2, you go to negative 2 and go down to 2. go to negative 2 and you go down to 2, negative 1 down to 1, uh, 0, 0 still works, over to 1, down 1, over to 2, down to 2. So where this one opens up, the 
this one comes down. So a negative would have flipped it over. Right? It would have made all those positive y values into negative y values. So multiply by a fraction. Multiply by a fraction, right? When we multiply by two, it made it steeper. Is it steeper or the same steep or less steep? This is less steep than the normal, right? Oh, let's, uh, red. Absolute value of x would look like this. 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2, negative 3, 3. Would look like that. So this one's less steep. By how much? A lot. Third. Third is a third as steep. That sounds reasonable. One third times the absolute value of x. It's two-thirds less steep. It's one-third as steep, two-thirds less steep. So it's one-third as steep. Let's, let's check this out and make sure this works. So when we put in zero, do we get zero? Mm -hmm. Zero, yeah, zero. Uh, let's go over here since this is a point right on the grid. Negative three, and we should get one. Put in negative three. What's the absolute value of negative three? Three, three times one-third. One. one. Mm, so it's working. And it'll work on the other side as well. And piecewise function. So what does it all mean? What's up with all these different pieces of a piecewise function? We just, you just walk up to the graph and graph this. Let's graph this line. Just cross the whole thing, just graph it. Just go up y intercept 1, slope of 2, up one, about 2 and over 1. And just graph it there and there. And we're done? No. no. Okay, so what's wrong about what I just did? So the, the, the condition would be, if we're going to graph this, only if what? So what, what, do I, what do I do now? I, you know, I've already graphed that 2x plus 1 function. How can I fix it? What does it mean, only graph it, when x is greater than or equal to 0? can't have negative x values, at least this function can't have negative x values. x values, not y values, x values. So, so, but what do I physically do to the graph to try and fix what I've messed up so far? Yeah? You erase the line that's on the left side of the y-axis. Excellent, yeah. Erase the part of the graph that's on the left side of the y-axis, the, the y-axis being the dividing line for negative x values and uh, positive y, uh, x values. So we just got rid of that. Okay. So it only goes from here over, from here to the right. That's where that graph exists. But what about over here? Does it tell me what to do over here? Mm -hmm. How do you know? Which one? Negative x plus one. Yeah. Negative x plus one. But how do I know I'm supposed to use it over here? X is less than zero. X is less than zero. So x is greater than or equal to zero, use that function. X is less than zero, use that function. Oh, we can't do that. Oh, so boring in red. So uh, y intercept of 1, uh, right there. And up 1 and to the left 1 for a negative 1 slope. There we go. Pretty good. Okay, it's just defined in two pieces. Uh, use this function here. And then when you get to this point, stop using that function and use this other function. We can do that in 
two pieces or three pieces or four pieces or how many pieces that we want to do. Uh, any questions from other parts of the homework? in your homework. So let's just remind ourselves about inequalities and how we graph inequalities, right? So I want you in your notes to graph these two inequalities. It should be pretty simple. X is greater than or equal to 3, and X is less than 5. So we graph those two. This, x is greater than or equal to 3, there's 0, 1, 2, 3, and shade to the right of 3, right? Because that's where x is bigger than 3. This is where x, x is equal to 3. What do we do at 3? Open circle? Closed. No, closed. Oh, wait, 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 wait. closed, right? The closedness of the circle reminds us that it includes 3. Being equal to 3 is all right. There's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Can we be equal to 5? No. So we use our open circle and shade to the left. Because that's where x is less than 5. Uh, now let's try a couple others. y is greater than, or right, equal to negative 2, or y is less than than nine. Looks good. I was curious if anyone <coughs> would do this. Uh, nobody really did. Gordon kind of did. Gordon took it to the second dimension. But for now, we're still in one dimension. Left, right, one dimension. Up, down, one dimension. Okay. So, why am I putting these vertically? 
because if we use an x and a y axis together, we make the y the vertical one. Now, if you made it horizontal, it's absolutely right. right? It's, just a, it's just a variable that needs to be less than a particular number or greater than or equal to a particular number. So whether you call it x or you call it y, it doesn't really matter. But if we do think in terms of y being vertical and x being horizontal, it's going to help us today. So if y is less than or greater than or equal to negative 2, we close that circle at negative 2, and then we shade everything above that. If you did it from left to right, that's fine. That's, that's correct, too. There is going to definitely be the, the element of up and down for y today. Uh, well, here's 9, 0, 9. We don't want to include it, so we give it an open circle. Yeah. So that's one dimension, like I said, and now we're just going to take it into the second dimension. We don't just want y to be greater than a number, negative 2. We want it to be greater than some quantity. We'll calculate a quantity over here, and we always want y to be bigger than that one, okay? or less than, or whatever. Okay. So not only is there going to be numbers over here, we'll also have the variables over here. How does that graph look? That's what we want to know. <coughs> so we want y to be greater than or less than some quantity. Okay. But let's start off slowly. Let's start off where y is equal to a quantity y is equal to negative 2x minus 1, graph that. Graph what that looks like. So see you all uh, at least recognize that you know, this is going to be a graph, like an xy graph. We're going to have an x-axis and a y-axis. And the reason why is because if there's only one variable, like this one, then we could graph this relationship between one variable and a number in one dimension, right? up or down. Uh, or if it's x, we could do left or right. We have two variables here. Right? So what should y be equal to? Should it be equal to 5? Well, at some point, it will be equal to 5 if x is the right value. Should it be equal to uh, 7? Should it be equal to negative 3? Should it be equal to what should it be equal to? Well, it should be equal to whatever you get uh, on this side. Right? So it depends. y could equal, let's say, negative 5 if what? Just two, because this is already negative. So if x is equal to two, and y could be equal to negative one if x is zero. And we'll do one more. Y could be equal to negative three if x is one. Uh, if I wanted to just say y is uh, equal to zero, I could come over here. I could put a little dot. Right there is 0. Y is 0. Okay? But that's not all. Y could be something else. And so that's why we invented this XY graph uh, so that we could graph two variables changing 
Uh, and as one changes, the changes the other one. So when uh, x is 0, y is negative 1. Well, we know that as the y-intercept of that graph, <coughs> that line, right? Um, when x is 1, y is negative 3. x is 1, y is negative 3. When x is 2, y is negative 5. And then we can just connect all those. And I made that a, a long, drawn-out explanation, just in case any part of that is not stuck in your brain. Okay, This line right here is just a collection of all the points where, like right here, if I pick this point, well, can you tell me something about that point? What about that point on that line? What's special about it? special about it. it's on the line. There is something special about that point. Don't even bother graphing the first one, okay? Uh, I don't know, x has to be some negative number? What's that? x has to be negative, so it's... x is negative over here, right? So, I mean, that's different from these. But, I mean, what's different about that point as opposed to this point? How is this point special to this equation and this one isn't? Since there's a point answers the equation. Yeah, the point answers the equation. Uh, if you take the x and the y of this point, this x and this y, and you put this x right there, and you put this y right there, the equation becomes true. What would happen if you put this x, let's call it x1 and y1, what if you put the, that x and that y in there? What would happen? It wouldn't be true. It just wouldn't be true. Okay. So it's true if we put this x and this y that are on the line, right? So all the values on the line, if we put them in, then the two sides will be the same, right? They'll be equal to each other. That's what's special about the points on this line. Okay. <coughs> so here, here's the, the important piece right here. The new piece. All this, the, the stuff that we just said, we've said many, many times before. All the points on that line, if you put the x and the y into the equation, it makes the equation true. Okay? Um, and I'm going to pick, uh, instead of a point down here, I'm going to pick a point. Plug this x, y, this x and this y into the equation, both sides are the same. They're equal to each other. What if we were to pick this x and this y from this point right here? And we plug them in. Would both sides be, be equal to each other? Mm -hmm. So one side would have to be, if they're not equal, one side would have to be what? Greater. Greater. Or less, right? If, and one side's greater, the other side's less. Right over there. Yep. Uh, yeah, so one side's going to have to be bigger. Or the other side's going to have to be smaller, either way. Okay. <coughs> but see how I chose this point. This point is, it has the same x, right? I picked it to be right above it, right? So the only thing that's different is this y value. So how does this y value compare to this y value? It's greater, right? Um, so let's pick a, maybe a specific x and y value as we continue through this discussion. So negative uh, 4, OK? And so what's y going to be? It's going to be 7. 
plug negative 4 into the equation, it tells us what it's going to be. Right? Well, what's this x value? 7, or 4, negative 4. Negative 4, it's the same as this x value. I chose it on purpose to be above this other point. So we don't really know what this y value is, but when we plug it in, when we plug in this x and this y, one of the sides has to be greater. Which side is going to be greater? The y side or the x side? The y side. The y side. If y is, the y value clearly, the points on this line are where both sides of the equation will be equal if I plug in x and y. This guy up here will be where y is bigger than that quantity that you get when you plug that x in, right? Make sense? So if I plug in negative 4, I'm going to get 7. Anything above that, any, any point above that is going to have a x value is the same, which will always give you 7, but a y value that's bigger than that. Right? So like we could, we could shade in all these y values up here, right? All the points above that point. What can we say about all the points above that point? What's greater than what? Y, the y values are greater than 7. The y values are greater than 7, right? And so the y values of all these points will be greater than what you get when you plug in negative 4. Does that make sense? Right? If you plug in negative 4, you'll get 7. If you pick a point above here, the y value will be more than 7. be more than what you get at that point. Okay. Well, if I pick this point, this random uh, not specific point. If we plug in this x and this y from this point on the line, we'll get equal, equal sides. Right? Both sides of the equation will be equal. But if we pick values above that, then what would we say about all the points above this one? Y would be bigger. Y would be bigger. Y is going to be bigger than, th than this y value, right? This y value is equal to what you get when you plug in this x value. And any y value above that would be bigger than what you get when you plug in this x value. You can shade in all those. All of the ones above that point. Well, what about for this point? Where are all the y values that are greater above it? And here? Above it, above it. So if I were to write this down, y, maybe I'll do it in uh, green, y is greater than or equal to negative 2x minus 1. How would I show that? How would I show all the y values that are greater than what you get when you plug x values into this side? Where are those y values? Above that line. Oh, you should have Yeah. I mean, what we could really do is, is pick, if we could just like, here, these, all these points, all of these points up here, all these points, the y values are bigger than the y values on the line. So I could do all this. Or to save ourselves some time, we shade it in. The shading in, really, in reality, is representing all of those points being you know, put on the graph, being drawn. All above here, we'll let that be seen. All these points up here, above this line, On the line, you plug in x and y, and you get an equation. Above the line, above, right, greater than y, y being the vertical, y is greater uh, than this y value, which is, about, if you use that y and x value on the line, they'll, they'll be equal. And if you use this y value, but the same x value, y will be greater. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. So the same way that we draw a line to represent all the points where the two sides will be equal, we put this x in and this y in, both sides will be equal. That's what that line is. <coughs> when we shade it in, we're representing all the places that, including a line, uh, that will get equal, right? Both sides will be equal if you plug in x and y values from the line. And above the line, the y values will be bigger than what you get when you plug in whatever x value you plug in. Okay. Um, 
So if y needs to be greater than the values you get on the line, you shade above. And if it needs to be less than, if y is less than or equal to 2x, plus, 2x minus 1, how would you show that? Shade below the line, right? Above and below. Above the line is greater, y is greater above the line, and y is the y values below that line are less than the y values on that line. job out there. Color. Right, so we've got y intercept to negative 2. Like for this graph, this kind of looks like it looks like the equation of a line. Right? And the line, remember, the line, the points on the line are ones that where you take the x and the y and you put it in to, to this. Let me graph this line so that we can talk about it a little more concretely. Remind me, if we take an x and y value from a point on this line and put that x and that y here and there, then what, what would happen to both sides of the equation? Or both sides of this thing? They'd be equal. Is it okay that they're equal? Yeah. Yes, it is. The, equa the, the equals or what equals to is there. But we don't want to just show the y's that are equal to that expression, right? this expression right here. That's the ones on the line. We also want to show the y values that are greater than the values that come out of that expression. So where are those values? They're above the line, so we shade above the line. Let's do another one. Be slightly different. Let's see if you can pick up on uh, a couple different things. Let's go with 15. Again. Let's
Okay. Um, if we were to treat this like the equation 2x plus y equals 6, then that would, uh, and I just got this from looking at somebody's paper, it seems like this is what they did. Uh, 2x plus y equals 6, would that be the standard form of the equation of a line? Which, if you remember, helps us find x and y intercepts really easily. So we can definitely graph this line. So if we, if we just kind of, for a second, treat this like an equality sign, an equal sign, then we could put a 0 in for y, and we find out that x would be equal to 3. So x would be 3. Right. If we put a 0 in for x, 2 times 0 is 0, and so y is going to be 6. OK, and then I see lines being drawn. That's good. Now the only thing is, how do I know where to shade? Well, wouldn't there be a dotted line? What's that? Wouldn't there be a dotted line? So it's not equal to. Okay, so that's. So you guys have done this before? Have you guys graphed these before? No? Some, some have, some have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was going to get to that in a, a second, but yeah. Um, we can't have these two quantities be equal. They cannot be equal. Because we're not, a, we're not told that that's okay, right? And just like back here, where if x can't be equal to 5, it won't be less than 5, we put an open circle to represent, like, don't include 5. Then here, to do that same kind of thing, just a, a signal to other people reading this graph, that the points on the line won't work. Right? Because again, if we choose points that are on the line and we plug that x and y in, what would we say about these two sides? It would come out being what? Equal. Equal. Be equal, that's exactly what this line represents. It represents all the places where this side is the same as this side. This side needs to be less than that side. But how can I tell where I'm supposed to shade? Should I shade above it or below it? Um, the Why below? Symbol, the Go symbol ahead. is less than pointed to the y. No, that's not going to work. Is it whatever side y is on? Not necessarily. The only thing that it would throw that off is if it was like, if that was 2x minus y, that would be different. Well, then you would have to multiply. Well, y is less than 6. Divide so by go down. Y is less than 6? But this isn't saying y is less than 6. It's saying that the entire thing has to be less than 6. <coughs> Should we pick y values that are less than or below the line or above the line? Well, an easy way to tell if, we're, if we want y values that are less than the values that are on the line or more than the values that are on the line is to just make it tell us by getting y by itself so that we, it tells us y needs to be whatever it needs to be. So if we do get y by itself, then y will be less than negative 2x plus 6. And now we can see the values on the line would make this side and this side the same. The values below the line would give us y values that are less than the values that are on the line. It's going to be shaded below. Just a, a helpful hint, if, um, if for whatever reason you're thinking I'll shade to the left or I'll shade to the right, well, that's going to be kind of hard because when it's written this way at least, y is need, it needs to be less than or it needs to be greater than, whatever. Okay? And that's vertical. If you're thinking left and right, that's horizontal. That's something about x. Right? If you're thinking left and right, you're thinking x. If you think y, though, and most of them are going to be written as y equals, then, then that works vertical. If you want to go left and right, you have to get x by itself. Okay, so you have to subtract y and then divide by 2, and then all the values of x would have to be less than uh, 3 minus y over 2. And so that would also you know, 
but that would tell you that those values are to the left. Um, if you don't like that, if you don't like saying, you know, above or below, you could graph your line, and if it's greater than uh, or less than but not equal to, make sure it's a dotted line. If it's equal to, make sure it's a solid line. Okay. And we know one of these things is going to be shaded, right? Either up here or down here. Agreed? Either up here is going to be shaded or down here is going to be shaded. Okay? Wherever that shaded region is, if you pick a point from that shaded region, okay, then if you, if you take a point like this from here, uh, well, let's say here because we know it's supposed to be shaded down here. So if we take a point from right here and we put it, the y here and the x here, then what's going to happen? Is this, is this going to be true? Is this side going to be less mm -hmm. than that side? It is. What if you pick a point up here, though? No. Not going to be true. So you could draw your line, and then you could just pick a point and test it out. Okay. And a real nice point to test out is 0, 0, because 0 goes in for x and 0 goes in for y. And then we figure out, is the inequality true? Okay. So we can pick this point, 0, 0. So is 0 less than, this, this doesn't matter, is it less than 6? It is. So that, that point that we just picked must be in the shaded region. So we can shade that region. Okay. If we were to pick some other value, um, like 0, 7, if we chose 0, 7, if we put 0 in for x, that would go away. We just get 6 over here. And 7 over here, would, be, would 7 be less than 6? No. no. So that didn't work out. This couldn't be a point from the shaded region. It would have to be the other shaded region. Well, we can, uh, we can apply this to absolute value graphs as well. Uh, y is greater than negative 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 4. First, we have to graph the, the absolute value uh, graph. Right? So we know we're going to start with a function, or a graph like this, and then shift it and, and let it be steeper or less steep, or whatever it needs to be. Over. So adding 4 to the outside, what effect does that have on the graph, on this graph? Up or down. Moves it which way, up or down? Is it up four? Up four. Okay. And then when we subtract three, what does that do? Two right. right three, as odd as that seems. That seems very odd. Okay. What does the two do? Just the two, not the negative, but the two. Creates a ratio go down to for every uh, right Steeper. One. It's twice as steep. And the negative? What does that do? Flips it over. Okay. And really, we should be following the order of operations here. Those, those things that affect the graph uh, affect it in a certain order. So we should, uh, we should move it to the right three. Okay. And then Make it twice as steep, okay? So we've got this steeper thing in mind. We don't want to finish drawing it yet because we don't know anything about it. It's going to be steeper. It's going to be flipped upside down, so it's going to be steeper down this way. Just going in the order of operations here. And then we're going to add 4 to it, and it's going to go up 4 here. Okay? But before that, it was, it was right here, and it was pointing down. So we'll come up here. We'll make sure that it goes down 2 for every 1 that it goes over. Down to one like that. But what we've just drawn is where y is equal to negative 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 4. But we don't want y to necessarily be equal to that, right? We want y to be what? Greater than that. Where will y be greater than that? Is that everywhere but in the wedge? Everywhere but in the wedge, above, the, above this graph, right up here. Up here. Okay. 
up here, not down there. Something just shaded there. Anything else? Dotted line, not a solid line.